Another week, another trading cycles video. It's week 12, 2024. My name is Ormas and I'm here to give you a hand overview of what happened uh, last week and what to expect on financial markets um, this coming week. Today is um, 17th of March, uh, Sunday. And um, before we go through uh, those details, um, obviously you are free to smash that like button as well if you like the content that I provide here and also subscribe if you haven't done so already. I uh, do need to, uh, need to remind you that this content is provided though for um, uh, educational purposes only and you need to do your own due diligence uh, before making any decisions um, and always trade the price, not the prediction. All right. So uh, what we have seen um, last week, the main focus still goes around that um, rate um, uh, obviously cut information ex expectation, let's put it that way. Yeah. So um, this coming week we will see uh, what Fed will come up with or what they have to say about it. But um, yeah, the expectations are still on um, that side that uh, rate cuts won't happen before June at the moment. Yeah. Now we did get some inflation numbers as well last week, and they were a bit higher than was expected. So uh, that might uh, obviously slow down uh, Fed as well in that regard. Um, although on employment side, yes, uh, the data was a bit mixed. Uh, there was slight decrease in jobless claims and um, a raise in retail sales. So. Um, yeah, we shall see how it's gonna how it's gonna play out. And um, on another hand, global pressure is rising now. Basically, uh, corporate defaults are now on the rise as well, which is not good at all. Yeah, so we are uh, approaching um, those levels that we saw back in 2009 after the financial crisis. Yeah, in regards. So yeah, the economy, the rates, they, they don't really help and obviously consumers are struggling as well. So consumer debt is also on uh, very, very high levels. Yeah. So yeah, the situation doesn't look good at all. So Fed might have to step in despite um, uh, still uh, quite high inflation. Uh, so they might have to make decisions before we before they um, reach their 2% target. But um, yeah, obviously we shall see what sort of news they're gonna, gonna spread this week. Um, US national debt is also on a heavy rise. It looks like Nvidia stock already <laughs> going high and very, very uh, heavily. Um, yeah, so it, it started basically um, uh, with Obama's uh, rulership there, and, and yeah, it has gone worse, obviously, after the, um, uh, the virus, um, obviously, lockdown and everything else. And now with Biden's uh, administration, it has gone even higher and more exponentially. So where it's going to all end, it's hard to say, but yeah, that doesn't seem to be sustainable at all, as um, Chair Powell has uh, has said uh, repeatedly that uh, yes, that doesn't um, obviously look sustainable for the for the long run. Yeah. What is the solution? Well, we shall see what they come up with. Yeah, eventually they have to decide something. Now. The US stock market is still uh, is still the largest one and um, and also the Magnificent Seven is largest than any other stock market in the world by the looks of it, yeah. Exceeding even China's stock market. So that's how big they are. Uh, looking into um, banks and real estate exposure there, um, so there is a pressure and growing pressure for banks uh, in regards to commercial real estate. Um, the need for those um, is declining. Also, there will be more struggles as um, companies are obviously struggling and, and um, uh, getting bankrupt and so on. So obviously the pressure for banks will start rising probably this um, second half of this year. Yeah? And, um, well, we have seen already that, uh, for example, that 
New York Community Bank that um, got into troubles. They had very high exposure on that side, but um, nonetheless, there are other banks as well that are um, not with small portfolio at all. For example, Wells Fargo has more than 22, 21%. Sorry, um, well, JP Morgan has a bit less, 12.6%. Um, but there are some smaller banks that are quite exposed, yeah, still. So something to keep an eye on and be cautious about, yeah. Okay. Now, on the other news, uh, what we did see, so Elon Musk is um, now saying that his XAI will become open source mm, and um, it's going to be another chapter than in Musk and open AI rivalry. Um, also, Airbnb, Airbnb uh, is going to ban indoor cameras, uh, if it concerns you, and also some of the outdoor cameras will have some uh, certain stricter restrictions. Uh, it will be effective from 13th, 30th of April yeah, this year. Now, Xiaomi enters uh, a car market, um, surprisingly. Um, so, uh, yeah, later on this month, they should come up to, with their first electric car. Um, now, Dollar Tree did uh, announce that they're going to close um, 30 stores um, as inflation uh, pressure rises. And um, uh, Family Dollar, also owned by Dollar Tree, plans to close 1,000 stores with 600 grocers um, planned for the uh, first half of this year. So, yeah, it's not looking good at all for retail. Uh, Morgan Stanley did announce that they will have AI lead now. Um, this position will be taken by Jeff McMillan, uh, this the bank's first head of AI. Okay, so that's obviously signaling the growth um, uh, in importance of AI in financial sec sector as well. Um, McD McDonald's did have <laughs> some um, uh, technical issues uh, this week. They had some disruptions there around the world, but also including Australia and UK. So yeah, interesting. Um, what else we did see? So Adobe was um, announcing their earnings. Numbers were not bad at all. Yeah, it's all all good. Although their AI. Mm, obviously, efforts have not been uh, paying off that uh, that well, so numbers were uh, not so good, and the price dropped um, uh, roughly around 12% after the earnings. So, yeah, it's not that rosy at all, so it's, it's quite difficult for companies to monetize on that AI side, so everyone is talking about it, but how they're going to make money on it, well, that's another story, yeah? so we might hear more about it at some point as well. Under Armour also did drop around 12% after the news that founder Kevin Plank is returning as CEO. And Amazon will announce new AI tool which is um, rolled out um, as a seller's tool to uh, quickly generate uh, product pages for their external links. Alright, so that's interesting development as well. And self-checkouts um, will be rolled back uh, for Dollar General, so um, they are reducing self-checkouts across the stores um, to combat theft. Are just um, straight uh, strategies in 9,000 stores, yeah, and limiting self-checkouts um, in 4,500 others to five or fewer items, yeah. So yeah, that has been a big issue for a uh, retail sector indeed. Um, and they don't seem to work that well either, yeah? so they will always need somebody to supervise them still. Um, buybacks will be on hold now until 26th of April, as um, a new earnings season will begin then. Um, and um, pension funds are going to be probably adjusting their um, portfolios as well in the next 10 days um, to finish the quarter in uh, proper balance as they are obviously looking to keep 60-40 uh, balance there, 16 stocks and um, 14 bonds. So we might he see some more selling pressure from pension funds as well. Mm, and um, yeah, that's about it. And uh, let's have a look how the stock market did look like, uh, at least S&P 500 here. So we can see that um, uh, the growing ones were, uh, for example, PayPal, uh, then 3M, 
Mm, also Oracle did perform very well. And uh, from the negative side, we did see Dollar Tree dropping quite heavily. Mm, and then JBL, for example, Adobe, AMD, as, as, as already mentioned. Yes, yeah, so uh, and Boeing as well. Yeah. Now, in regards to Boeing, uh, Boeing has been in news uh, for quite some time already, and um, there were some additional incidents now happening. Um, uh, one of the wheels did drop off on, on one of the planes, and there was a uh, quite heavy drop on, on one of the flights from, I think it was New Zealand and uh, Australia, or between them, where uh, 50 people got inj injured. And there were a couple of more incidents, and also uh, Boeing's whistleblower, um, blower, <laughs> who was justifying uh, about um, those quality issues, uh, was found dead in his car. So apparently, it was um, uh, his uh, his own decision. But yeah, well, it is kind of suspicious anyway. So um, the story is not obviously uh, ending uh, just yet, as we have seen um, full moons appearing uh, f in, in five degrees, which is very important degree for um, uh, airplane industry overall, but especially for Boeing. And um, we will see another full moon, which will be this time eclipse on 25th of March, also five degrees, this time in uh, Libra. And it will be in uh, conjunction with uh, Boeing's uh, Mercury in that chart. So that will be very important um, uh, full more lunar eclipse. And the effect of it is obviously much stronger than than normal full moons. So it will be full moon in, in steroids, yeah, basically. So I suspect that there will be some more news um, from Boeing's side as well. And it's uh, good to be obviously cautious about it. and. Um, and um, be aware that there might be some more issues coming. Now, coming back to the markets, so basically just comparing uh, Russell 100, sorry, uh, Russell 1000 and Russell 2000, so mid caps and small caps, then the balance has been uh, strongly to the uh, mid cap uh, side. Um, um, how it's gonna uh, play out from here, uh, there have been some divergences, but not lately, yes, yeah. so um, this balance might still continue. Uh, small gaps are not performing that well at all. And um, also, it is highly um, out of balance um, uh, for growth stock side um, versus value stocks. So it has been now uh, turning a bit, so we'll see if, if, the, um, uh, if the trend is going to continue, but at the moment, yes. Uh, Growth is obviously more valuable than, than value stocks, if I may say so. I say so yeah. um, now, um, in regards to the um, forecast uh, that was put out last week, um, so as said, uh, it might sometimes work uh, inverted. So that bottom might have been a top for the week. And how it did play out, I was keeping a close eye on it. and. Uh, on Monday, for example, well, I had three cycles in play here, so you can see three lines, those colored ones. And um, uh, on Monday, we did see quite heavy drop there, and it was in alignment with those um, turning points here, here as well on those cycles. And, uh, and then I thought that it might be inverted indeed, yeah. So I started following it more. On Tuesday, we did see that it indeed plays out that way. Wednesday was quite stable day, so I did uh, wait a bit uh, until some clarity comes into play. Mm, and on um, Thursday, when I saw that this red cycle is, is playing out the best way here, I uh, started to make decisions here. Yes, so um, I did uh, sell short S&P in here and in here. And I did exit this position roughly around here. And now, what uh, really then happened? Um, basically, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, uh, so basically, it did uh, start declining, and uh, yeah, you might already know that that uh, there was a mini mini crash in the end of week. Well, if I say so, <laughs> it was really a small small correction at this time. But uh, yeah, it did play out very well. So um, it was obviously inverted. Mm, now, 
the real price movement is here uh, with our uh, indicators on top of that as well. So, yeah, we did some resistance uh, obviously forming here on Thursday and it did start declining from there. And we did touch the support level where the drop did end. So that was uh, very well played out uh, trade indeed. Now 50 day moving average is um, still moving in that uh, average <laughs> <laughs> range here, yeah, okay, around 50s. Uh, 200 day moving average is still on uh, on its highs, so uh, to still about 75% of, mm, of companies on S&P are trading above their moving average, 200 day moving average. Mm, and VIX index hasn't seen really any movement either, um, uh, still quite low, it did rise a bit to 14 now, but uh, yeah, it's still nothing major obviously. Uh, technically, S&P 500 is very strong still. We might have another um, uh, buying opportunity here. They're forming uh, next week, possibly. So we'll see how it's going to play out. Um, now, weekly chart shows that the market is very heavily overextended. But when it's going to turn, well, it's hard to hard to predict. There is some um, divergence forming, but it's it's very slow moving as it's a weekly chart. Yeah. So obviously we are keeping an eye on it and if there's something to change then yeah, you will know about it as well as long as you subscribe and obviously follow our content. Yeah, all right. So that's a good point to remind you that uh, please like and share our videos as well if you like the content. Uh, now Russell 2000 uh, did see some decline as well. It did bounce back from this uh, resistance here. Mm, yeah, but it's moving in channel now, so yeah, it's uh, difficult to say when it's going to break out uh, or break out. Let's put it that way. Uh, sector performance-wise, energy was the strongest, and uh, real estate was the weakest during the week. Now, heat map did show as well uh, quite mixed results. Uh, so on that uh, top as well, we did see, uh, for example, Microsoft, Microsoft and Google uh, performing the best. Apple and Nvidia were quite stable, and Meta and Tesla were uh, declining quite heavily. Yeah? So um, that's the situation. And Adobe was uh, quite heavy, heavy, uh, obviously loser there. Yeah. All right. Um, insiders uh, have been now uh, slowing down a bit. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, and uh, they are still selling, but not that heavily anymore. Um, so there is a comparison about um, a week ago and, and two weeks ago. So there are some changes, but the main ones are still about the same. Yeah. Fear and greed index is still on greed level. Uh, they drop a bit, uh, but uh, still quite greedy market. Mm, and we can see that it stays on that that level as well here. Yeah. So nothing really is changing in that sense. So until it's going to break down. Yeah. The market keeps keeps being strong. All right. Uh, so crypto fear and greed index is still in extre extreme levels. Yeah, <laughs> let's put it that way. Yeah, nothing has changed so far. Although Bitcoin did uh, start uh, correcting a bit, but not heavily. Yeah, so that's quite quite normal. Uh, now seasonally we are in that decline, uh, obviously period. So this is quite quite okay to expect some stocks to be correcting at this time, and uh, this might choose to soon change. <laughs> so basically, after the next week, we are entering a very strong um, positive period again for S&P 500, which is going to last uh, up until. Uh, almost end of April, yeah. so we'll see how it's going to play out, but yeah, the expectancies are fairly high for this trend to continue, yeah. okay. Uh, now, Astro Calendar will see some uh, changes as well. Wednesday, when the Fed is coming up with their decision, we have an, um, basically sun entering uh, Aries, which is uh, spring equinox, and um, it is quite important to bear that in mind. Uh, there might be some changes coming uh, on some sectors or, or markets. Uh, there will be um, then Venus conjunct Saturn on uh, Thursday and on Friday Mars will enter Pisces. So yeah, these are quite important aspects. And next Monday we will have lunar eclipse as, as discussed earlier. Yeah? So 
we might see quite a lot of volatility in the next coming weeks as well. And the retro Mercury is about to begin soon as well in the beginning of April and uh, we, are, we are already in that shadow period. So that's already something we can feel possibly. Yeah? Uh, our black box model is still fairly strong, yeah, to be honest. Um, so nothing too serious so far. Mm, what to expect in the markets next week then? Yes, as uh, said, Fed's rate decision is coming out on Wednesday. And we are going to be keenly looking or hearing uh, what, his, uh, what Powell has to say in regards as well. Um, government shutdown deadline is approaching on Friday. Again, something to keep an eye on. Uh, some earnings are still coming out. Micron Technology, for example, General Mills, Nike, uh, FedEx and uh, Xpeng as well, which is China's uh, major uh, electric vehicle players, or one of the Tesla's major com competitors. And um, yeah, we'll see what their numbers are telling us. Yeah, all right. And NVIDIA's uh, global... Uh, Processing unit uh, technology conf uh, conferences taking place as well on Monday. Okay. Uh, cyclical uh, prediction there. Um, now, mm, there are um, those same three cycles in place still. Mm, so we're going to see how it's going to play out. So obviously, this is not a, a recommendation or um, um, or any sort of uh, trading or investment advice. Uh, it is just for educational purposes only here um, to see how those things are playing out. Uh, said uh, last week, those cycles might be inverted as well, but we should see some sort of turning point in uh, midweek. Okay. Now our cyclical stock, uh, Wills Tower Watson, um, mm, by the cycles we should have had now quite a uh, good correction coming in, although the price uh, has dropped only a little bit. So we might see actually this cycle to be um, to be left uh, out, and uh, we might see the cycle ending only in April, May. Yeah? Okay, and then it starts declining. Okay, so that's about it. So let's have a look at um, at um, charts as well. Mm -hmm. Now, S&P turning points. We did see one turning point on Friday, next one coming up on Tuesday, 19th of March. Um, so, and uh, let's look at the gold market as well. The last turning point was on 14th, which was Thursday last week, and the next one coming up on Tuesday, 26th. So there's nothing really in between. So whether the price is going to continue rising, or is it going to now correct until the next one? Well, it's... Um, Something we need to wait and see. Now, Bitcoin did see some um, uh, correction, as mentioned, yeah, uh, but it's still uh, technically very strong. Yeah, so nothing, nothing serious so far. And today it has been uh, already, already giving back uh, a bit. Yeah. Mm, so um, yeah, it's all all good so far. Not to worry. Um, and let's have a look at some uh, stocks as well. We did go through them extensively last week, uh, but um, just briefly then mm, looking at short-term tendencies here. So if you look at uh, Apple, it's still quite uh, negative uh, short-term, but it is finding some sort of support here already. Yeah? And uh, we do see some sort of... Uh, Diversions, positive diversions, obviously forming in as well. So we might see the price now turning, yeah, as well. Okay, as we are approaching that cycle low here, uh, yeah, that might be the end of that move. Amazon is still very positive in the long run, but there are negative divergences in place. So we might see a bit more correction coming in as well if it. Uh, does hold. If not, then we will see a breakthrough and those divergences will will obviously indicate uh, that there might be even stronger moves to the upside coming. Yeah? And um, looking at Google short term, it's still staying on that um, negative territory, although it's been improving now. Yeah? And um, did we see some sort of divergence here as well? Or no, not really. Yeah? So it's still Fairly negative at the moment. Mm, Meta has been uh, 
quite strong. Uh, there are some divergences and resistance also in play, but um, yeah, we shall see if it's going to correct a bit from here on and then continue or uh, what's going to happen. But that's that's what we see at the moment. Yeah. Microsoft is also very strong. Nothing in short term has really changed. Um, it keeps rising and we did um, see our target, the first target uh, almost approached uh, last week. Mm, and the next target is going to be at 460. Yes, yeah, so uh, there is still some upside ahead possibly. Yeah. Uh, Netflix is also very positive, although this cap is, is uh, something we need to look out for. Yeah, So if that diver divergence is going to hold and it's going to correct, then we might close this cap at least. Yeah, So around 400, 500 level, yeah, basically. Um, what else? NVIDIA uh, is also showing a bit weakness there, uh, but it's holding steady. So it's kind of channeling now in that range here. So is it going to go higher or lower? Well, we shall see next week. Then at the moment it's it's uh, holding back a bit, yeah. And what else? Tesla is obviously short term still very negative, but as we are now on a major, um, so to say, important level, um, we did um, see uh, it approaching this channel line here and also the support is against it yeah so we might have seen a fake out at the moment and it's going to bounce back to the upside or it's going to fall further <laughs> but yeah at the moment uh, that two weeks time that i expected this price to fall has passed and uh, possibly yeah we might see another leg up from here yeah and this channel will complete as it is a downwards channel, it is very bullish. So at some point, when it breaks out of that channel, we will uh, we will see some strong moves with upside as well. But so far, yeah, we shall have to wait and see. And um, it might be quite a long time uh, to wait. But yeah, that's where we stand at the moment. Um, now, short term, yes, it is still negative. So we have to wait for some turning signals there coming in as well. Uh, PayPal did see some strength uh, during the week, but it's still staying on the negative territory. Uh, so hasn't really changed the direction uh, strongly. So at the moment, uh, being a bit cautious as it's been uh, breaking or faking out of that line uh, earlier as well. So it might be another fake out. Um, well, the company itself is very strong and, and there is quite great potential, but um, for some reason, the uh, market doesn't like it so much, yeah? so uh, we are still about um, the movement a bit cautious. And Boeing, uh, let's have a look at that one as well, that has been in a very strong decline and it's it's very negative as well, yeah? so it's been going to the downside. Uh, let me see if there's any, any divergences coming in. Um, not, yeah, there is some, yeah, already forming, so... We might see some trend change there as well, but on the long run, I think it's still something to be very cautious about. As I explained, um, those um, full moons are affected the price very, very heavily. If there's something, uh, some sort of black swan or, or grey swan event still coming, then yeah, the price might see very heavy decline still from here as well. Okay. Perfect. Well, that's about it. So um, I'll uh, thank you for your time and for being me with me till the end. And if you did like this episode, please um, click that like button and share this video as well uh, with others. Uh, that's obviously very important for the channel as well. We'd like to spread this information as much as possible. And I'll thank you for your continuous support. So thank you very much uh, and have a happy trading week as well. I will see you next week.